My name is Josie Williams. I'm a data scientist and founder of Algorithmic Equity, an interactive digital platform that empowers any New Yorker to report, record, or respond to law enforcement behavior. The NYPD and city officials often attempt to convince the public that there are structural changes being made in police accountability. But since 2006, the Civilian Complaint Review Board, one of the only channels for reporting mis police misconduct, has received almost 70,000 complaints regarding police abuse of power, yet only 33% are fully investigated and 58% result in no arrest or summons whatsoever. Meanwhile, New Yorkers in the Brooklyn, Bronx, and Queens borough areas experience dramatically different methods of policing that are consistently ignored by the city government. Compared to the 24th precinct in the Upper West Side of Manhattan, which reports about 179 instances of force since 2016, the 44th precinct located in the Bronx has recorded almost four times as many use of force reports. This area is also home to a community that is 95% Black and Latinx, 57% are not United States citizens, and 44% of the households live under the poverty line. So compared to Precinct 24, a richer and wider neighborhood, these are vulnerable populations that are subject disproportionately to aggressive policing. And right now, there's a collective desire to recreate the way that we care for our fellow New Yorkers. However, New York City lacks the tools necessary for an honest reflection of the current and historical relationship between policing and its communities. Now, imagine a city where the NYPD are held accountable for misconduct through community action. Imagine a city that implemented digital infrastructure to promote communal health and awareness of inequity. Now, this is where algorithmic equity steps in. With the assimilation of historical police data, real-time community engagement, and access to local initiatives to support unified planning and action, algorithmic equity is a vital tool to engender equity, transparency, and accountability. The mission is to support, is to support community-led accountability and autonomy, along with the work of civil rights activists and organizations, and to confirm the reality of policing that many New Yorkers experience all through the thoughtful connection and utilization of data. So the goal is to create an honest and open representation of community policing trends and officer behavioral patterns generated directly by the impacted population themselves. In this way, every New Yorker is a data scientist. Each person can collect and share information of police interactions in, with the purpose of building a recontextualized and authentic representation of their own neighborhood. These collective patterns will link together into a shared community archive of various connections observed. So for example, if a user notices repeated instances of force by a particular officer, they can highlight this observed pattern to be seen by the rest of the community. So this platform can be used by individual change makers who want to organize locally or within their communities by community residents who want to have their voices heard and to build digital infrastructure for police accountability and by activists and grassroots organizations that can monitor the depth and scope of police misconduct and can better inform decisions on resource distribution and outreach. Algorithmic equity creates the potential for citizens and communities to feel seen and heard in a way that is constructive while assembling under common truths in an aggregated form. With the power of data, they can tell their own stories in a way that can be accessed by the very people and organizations intent on creating true systemic change. Here are a few of the supporters and endorsers of this project. They include Hawk Newsom, chair, uh, chairman and uh, founder of Black Lives Matter Greater New York, as well as James Felton Keith, president of the Data Union, who both ensure that this project remains rooted in social impact. And I have three asks in total. The first is for partnership. I'm looking for activists and grassroots community organizers and organizations who can help facilitate community outreach, research, and feedback, or organizations that are interested in utilizing or beta testing this work. And like everything, building this out is going to require some funds. So I'm looking for 50K for product development. But if you're interested in supporting this project or this work, you can make a donation on the website. 
And lastly, if you are an artist or if you're a creator, you can participate in the Artists for Algorithmic Equity Initiative, which gives creators access to police data to translate into a medium of their own choosing. So the objective is to have artists transform this overwhelming and two-dimensional data into a language that every New Yorker can understand. So for all three of those asks, you can go to this link, this website link, you can also send an email or follow the project on Instagram to stay updated. And last but not least, thank you. Uh, oh, that was that was so inspiring, Josie. Like such important work and really, really amazing to empower that like community to really, yeah, make action. It's it's really a special project. John, Jana, did you want to jump in at all? I have a just a small question about data visualization because that is such an interesting area. Um, how how to visualize data so that if we if each person is contributing the data, how does it get consolidated and then sent back to them in composite form? And how much do you, does that concern you? And how much do you, is that a part of a dimension of the project? Yeah, great question. So the uh, what I'm understanding is you're asking like what how does this that representation of information translate into like a visualization? Right. So you you contribute the data. Um, yeah, and so basically it. it just yeah, okay, good. <laughs> oh no, Josie froze. Okay. Oh, I'm froze. Okay, am I back? Okay, good. Yeah, I mean, so right now it's just kind of like a like you look at a map of a data visualization of New York City. You kind of look exactly where an incident might have happened to you or to somebody that you know that you want to submit an incident on behalf of. And you go ahead and submit that incident report, which then kind of generates into a pinpoint that stays onto the, the website for everyone's viewing. Um, and so that's kind of how the information goes from like the user end onto like this data visualization for everyone to see. And have you thought about it with other applications? Because it seems that it could be very generally valuable and also like the darker side, have you ever worried about how it could conceivably be misused if the same program was taken away from this good hearted community intention under the assumption that we all have the same values and was adopted by a group that had different values yeah. <laughs> and used it for a different purpose. Of course, and that's why uh, to address that concern, that's a huge concern of, of mine just coming from the data ethics and data collection um, ethics kind of realm. Um, and to that, I'm just trying to make it centered around community built organization. So it's not like I'm building it or an entity is building it. This is something that the community is intrinsically uh, like owns. And so no one can really take that away from them if that is like kind of the case. So it's like building it out in a way that um, involves the community rather than like, let's say opting for like a city government or like something like that, that might end up having to misuse the data that is collected by the, um, by the application. Um, I'm not sure if that answered your question, but let me know if it didn't and I'll give it another stab. <laughs> I mean, I think it's interesting because it applies to a lot of the most popular like applications that we have, right? Like that question, Jana, like it, it, it's, you know, I think even someone dropped in the chat, like the apps used for bad already exist. And that's, that's true a lot in a lot of the most like ubiquitous, um, you know, kind of apps that we have all have on our phone. It's, it's, yeah. I wonder why they all need to know our location. <laughs> why does my language practice app need to know my location. So it, it is a general question for big data for sure. And it, it even the most generous, innocent projects, you just, you, you do have to put up filters for people not being able to get the data that you've collected. Yeah, super interesting. Um, thank you, Josie, that was really powerful. And um, yeah, just so looking forward to hearing more. Um, Moving us along to our, our next presenter, uh, 